What's up everybody? Blue Gabe. Listen, today's video is something that I've never done before. You guys know I love shrimp. I love catching them. I love everything about shrimp. It's probably one of my favorite things to eat. We're in Florida. It's blowing like crazy. We can't go catch our own shrimp, but I have recently discovered a company called Homegrown shrimp they're here in indian town florida and they farm raised shrimp my whole life i paid attention to shrimp farms and fish farms and a lot of times they get a bad reputation what i've heard about this place is the exact opposite so i brought you guys here today with me and crystal and the kids and we're going to give you a tour from point a all the way to point z of what it takes to farm shrimp and do it the right way we're going to start off with the hatching and breeding part right now we're not wasting any time we're gonna dig right into it now again if you're wondering why i'm at a shrimp farm and you've heard something bad about fish farming or shrimp farming everything you've heard is about to be discredited because what we just saw in there is absolutely amazing all right you guys these tanks right here we're going to show you in just a second first we got to go in this dark room i've already filmed some of it with my cell phone so you'll get to see i'm gonna have jacob explain what's going on this is a massive shrimp farm and everything that has to do with the shrimp farm starts in this little bitty room and you would never believe it. Come on here. Shrimp spawn at night. Well, right now it's daytime. They don't want to be working at night, so they've flipped it. They make this room as if it's nighttime now. Come in here. Come in here. Let me see. You guys see all these shrimp? There's only what, about 100 in here? Yeah, about 100. About 100 shrimp, but they will produce millions of babies. Just these 100. He said each one of these females could produce up to 250,000 babies, each female. So the impact on the environment is so small. Now the amazing part to me is, is I was expecting there to be the hundreds and hundreds of thousands of breeder shrimp. But those couple hundred breeder shrimp, once they bred them, and they'll take five females and put them in this tank. Then they'll turn the lights off and let them do their thing. They'll have their babies in here, and then they'll take those shrimp and put them back in there, and the babies will get to us. How big will they get in this tank? Uh, not very big, so they get to a stage called Nauplii. So they will be about, well, be, there's five stages of Nauplii, so by the time we remove them from this tank, it'll probably be like Nauplii. They'll be tiny, 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 like smaller than a millimeter. Oh, macro. So I want you to remember how small this room is because when we get over there and you see how big everything else is, it all started with just a couple females. That's stage one. So we're getting ready to walk into stage two and Jacob just told me probably the coolest thing about this place is everything they do here stays in house. They make their own water and they continue to reuse their own water so there's zero discharge. Nothing from here is going into the environment. So. Luke, you enjoying yourself? Yes, come on. Jake? Oh yeah. Field trip. Are you ready for some <laughs> shrimp for dinner? Yeah. It's hot in all these rooms. Yeah. One thing we are noticing is it's very warm in here. Outside it's cold. They got to keep this room super hot. So the camera's going to be fogging up. We'll keep cleaning it. Holy moly, you can't even see him in there. So these are what comes from the breeder shrimp and you can't even see them. It just looks like little particles. This tank is full of these? That's what Yeah, so there's probably, I don't remember the tank count on top of my head, but I think there's about 500,000 in here. About 500,000 babies in there. So how do you get them out of that tank? With some kind of crazy like filter? Yeah, so they'll um, yeah, actually have, we'll go to another room, I'll show you. So. The ones I'm about to show you are going to be a lot bigger than uh, what I would normally have here. It is nuts. All right, so we just moved over one room, and now you can actually see these are starting to look like shrimp. Yeah, those are monsters. They look like little grass shrimp. Yeah, those are. How old will this shrimp be right here? So these guys are pretty old. These are. 30 days from hatching, but we call them, so once they start looking, get to the shape where they look like a normal shrimp, that's what we call PL. So this looks like, like that big guy right there. Yeah. He looks about like 20 days after post, post market. So after they're done, going through their last metamorphosis, he's about 20 days after that probably. That's so neat. So remember, this all started with about 100 females, not even 100, and it turns into literally millions of shrimp and they're all put in these tanks 
and they'll slowly start getting bigger. I can see some of them. You can see them? Yeah, you can probably see them. You can tell they got all kinds of crazy filtrations. These are saltwater shrimp. They're not freshwater shrimp. They're saltwater. And they make all their saltwater here in-house and it never leaves here. What do you think? They're so cute. You wanna keep them? It's crazy to think that that thing will get as big as those giant ones in the first room. Oh, they'll be monsters. So while we were leaving that last room, Crystal said, did you ever grow sea monkeys when you were young? I guess you could buy a little kit and hatch them in your house like you were a scientist. Well, Jacob said, just wait till you see the next process. So what they hatch in here is what they feed the shrimp here on the farm. This is one uh, tank of Artemia that she hatched yesterday. So she's about to harvest it right now. Um, and this so is what exactly? What is Temia or? Artemia is live brine shrimp, or a lot of people know them as sea monkeys. Um, sea monkeys. So basically, the, um, their eggs, or the shell, egg shell is magnetic. So in this blue tube are a bunch of magnets. This is gonna start coming down through here. This will fill up, and essentially as it fills up, there's magnets in there, and it's gonna collect the egg shells. But then you'll see here in a second, the artemia will start pouring out at the end. And that's how we collect them. This is so neat. You'll be able to see them here in a second. So what age shrimp do you feed these to? Basically their whole two weeks of their, from the day they hatch, like the first two weeks of their life, two to three weeks. Oh, so this is actually shrimp baby food. Yeah, basically it's larval food. Oh, she's so filling one, that back up with new salt water? Yeah, so that's, this she's harvesting to feed today. That she's stocking, so she's about to pour it in there. And she'll feed that tomorrow. So you see the, and you can actually. Those are all eggs that are gonna hatch. Yeah, so she's actually putting eggs in this side, and this is after they've hatched. So the sea monkeys, when you raise them at home, they'll get like much, much, much bigger. So yeah. this is just like the, the tiny little baby stage. Oh. There's a lot going into this, isn't there? I don't know if that was a like a 90s baby kind of thing, but um uh, I definitely did yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So you can order like a kit with sea monkeys. And so we were talking about that. They literally do everything in-house. I didn't think it was gonna be this detailed, but it's pretty neat. One thing he was telling us, if you don't feed shrimp here on the farm what they would eat in the wild, they won't taste like they do in the wild. So that's why they do it here too. I tell you what, today just keeps getting more interesting. So Jacob just told me what his job specifically is, is to grow the baby shrimp, but that's 30% of it. 70% of his job is to actually clean the water, water treatment. So you see all these PVC pipes, that's all the wastewater, how it leaves these rooms. And then it goes into this room here, which is free of oxygen. He said I could open it for just a second. I know you can't see it's dark, but that pond right there gets rid of all the nitrogen in the water. Then he has another pond right over here that has seaweed in it that gets rid of all the other stuff, the copper and the phosphate and anything else that can be in it. Once it leaves the seaweed pond, it then goes to a pond with a little bit of chlorine in it to disinfect it. Then it goes into another pond where the chlorine dissipates naturally on its own. Then the water's clean again, ready to reuse. You see how clear it is? Holy mackerel! Crystal clear. A lot of stuff that you're seeing on the bottom is just salt that will uh, basically calcify and eventually sink to the bottom. But that water is clean. Crystal clear, like coral reef. Um, in comparison, you got to think that water has been through a lot of stages in its life and here it is clean again. Now what you're seeing here is exactly what Aubrey Arrington, my oldest brother, does with human wastewater. That's what Aubrey does. He's the executive director of the La Chachi River District. His sole job is to take all the wastewater from Jupiter, Florida, clean it, and send it back out for reuse. So cleaning water is super important. The footprint of this shrimp farm is crazy important because they're raising shrimp that are edible, that are just as good as they are in the wild with no bycatch. Bycatch with commercial shrimping around the world is absolutely insane. If you knew how many fish turtles and everything else die to get most of the shrimp that come to your plate that are wild caught is mind blowing. Like millions of pounds of fish and everything else is killed a day to catch shrimp. This farm is producing the same quality shrimp with zero bycatch and zero negativity to the environment. All right, Jacob, thank you. That was your part of the tour. Who are we moving on to next? 
Sean and Riley. Sean and Riley, you all ready? What was your name? Maddie. Nice I'm to meet Thailand. you. Yes. Nice to meet nice you. To meet you this place is nice. Thank you. I like the zero footprint into the environment. We try, we try very hard. Yeah. It's neat. We're going on to stage two. Jacob deals with the hatchery and cleaning the water. Now we're going I'm to what part? Baby. Jacob is making the baby. Yeah, Jacob's making the baby. And now we bring the baby to grow them out in the farm. I look forward to it. Now the room we're about to walk into is a whole lot bigger. Y'all ready? Yep. Feels like, like these are cow pens are so big. I gotta just step up here. So what's what are we expecting now? What are we getting into? So this is the production side of the farm. Each of these tanks stocked with about 25,000 animals and this is where we grow them out from those PLs that you saw in the hatchery up to 30 grams in 90 days. Man, let's so go check it out. See, we have feed trays in all of these tanks. So we stand up on top and pull this tray out. <laughs> This is where we need to go shrimp and that was way easier than what we do. We'd have to scoop for 20 minutes to catch that many he just caught in one little deal. I wish you could see just how big this room is. It's gotta be, it's like the size of a huge Walmart. Yeah, the water can be dark. So we use what's called a bioflock system, which is a lot of beneficial bacteria that helps treat our water as the shrimp are growing. So we can minimize our water usage so we only need to do about a 10% water change per day and we can keep the shrimp happy and healthy. That's awesome. Now how old were the shrimp you just showed us? Those ones are 40 days. Oh yeah, I can't wait to see 90 days. Yeah, we have some on the other side if you really want to go see the really big ones. I mean, look at this. You guys, this is technical. This isn't your mom and pop's little shrimp farm in your backyard. Jake, what's been your favorite part so far? It's hard to say, there's been a lot. I like the breeding part. <laughs> to take just a couple big females and turn them into this. Remember, you see how big this room is? Look at this. This all started in that little teeny room up front with just maybe a hundred females. And it turns into something as big as a Costco or a Walmart and just millions of shrimp from a few hand selected females. So this tank was stocked last week. So if you want to see what they look like after a week of growth, See. They look like grass shrimp. Perfect size for speck fishing. Yeah. <laughs> Still small, but this is after only seven days when they come out of that uh, hatchery over there. How many see. will be in this tank? There are 25,000. So you can see once they get to this stage, they start growing pretty quickly. There's no crazy uh, food growth and hormones and stuff like that. It's pretty much all natural too, and that's the best part. It is a lot about temperature. They got to keep these rooms warm. They do not want to let them get cold. So this is after only a couple days of treatment. So these, this water will be ready by Thursday. They can already see how clear it is compared to what it was in the tanks. You can already see to the bottom. So another three, four days running on ozone and this will be crystal clear. So that's the sand filter right there. So that's mechanical filtration. So that'll remove large particulates that are floating around in the water. We have a protein skimmer right there that removes any sort of lipids and organic components that are floating around, any oils. It just bubbles up on the top, rinsed off with fresh water down the drain. Um, and then that box right there is our ozone machine. So this is what does the bulk of our cleaning. It raises the, uh, oxid uh, the ORP of the water, oxidation reduction, uh, and it basically just breaks down all the bad crap. It's like chlorine, but stronger. I've said it so many times now, I'm gonna say it again. This place is all about keeping everything clean. There's nothing here hurting anything. This, this is the dirtiest tank that we have, but it is also the most important. So after water changes or harvest, all of the water flows into one of these two tanks. These are completely anaerobic. There's no oxygen, no aeration, no water movement. And the whole purpose of that is it allows an anaerobic bacteria to flourish and we can add sugar and well, essentially all that nitrate that is in the water will just bubble off. So that's what all these bubbles are. It's just nitrogen gas. So that's sort of like a healthy gut. Yeah, exactly. Like your stomach. Yeah. Y'all see, I paid attention a little bit in school the couple of years I went. That tank right there might look disgusting, but he said it's absolutely vital to the next process. It's creating good organ organisms, right? Yeah, absolutely. I nailed that part. So this is 
just a big tank with a lot of aeration in it. The whole purpose of this, you jack up the oxygen in it. Um, it kills off any anaerobic bacteria. Water by this point will have no ammonia, no nitrogen, uh, really at all. No nitrate, nitrite. Um, at this point, it's ready to be hit with uh, what we call alum, um, which is aluminum sulfate. And that is just a big coagulant, basically like a glue. Huh. So we can dissolve it in water, spray it over the surface, and really, really fine particles that are floating around in the water that really cloud it up, um, all get stuck together, sink to the bottom, and can just be sand filtered out. The last step in our treatment, this water is water that has been fully processed through our treatment systems. It's not perfectly clean, uh, or clear I should say, because it's not ready for stocking. This water, by the time it goes through these four tanks, is perfectly usable for the bigger shrimp. Who's ready to see about an 80 day old shrimp? I know I am. What I just realized is this massive room is only half of it, because there's another one right here that's just as big. Everything in here is spotless clean. Today just got a whole lot more interesting. Manny himself, the boss, said that I can actually throw the cast net in the tank and catch us some for dinner. The coolest thing about this place, I'm gonna go through it in a list right now, is cleansiness. There's no negative impact on the environment. These shrimp are fed good, healthy food. They are born in America, raised in America, sold in America, in the shrimp. I already know this because my good friend Troy Woodham. Troy Woodham, I love you. He's who told me about this place. And I'm sure after this, so many of you guys are gonna come here and buy your own shrimp too. The shrimp are just as good eating out of these tanks as they are in the wild. They're saltwater raised shrimp. How does it get better than that? If you buy them from a grocery store, they're more than likely come from Indonesia or wherever. Just look at the pack that they come in or ask the guy behind the counter, where did these shrimp come from? They were probably harvested months and months and months before you get to eat them. At this place, if you buy them here, you get to eat them just like we do when we go do a shrimping video in Mims or in Louisiana or anywhere else. These are as good as shrimp as money can buy and you get to eat them the day after they were caught. And we're getting ready to cast net in this tank. I didn't know I was gonna get to do any cast netting today. We fired up. Yeah. <laughs> Just drop it. Didn't think we were going shrimping today for real. I think I got them. <laughs> Babe, we got shrimp. We don't want to keep all these though, right? Let's let a couple out. That's probably enough right there. Check that out. Here. This is so much cheaper than going to catch them in the wild. Look at that big boy. Jumbo. This would be a jumbo if you were in Mim shrimping all day long. And I didn't even let the net hit the bottom. Next step, folks. So when they harvest all these shrimp, they bring them into here and this is what they call a flash freezer. It drops to negative 45 and freezes them like that. Then they have an ice machine here. And this is, are we going in this room? We're going in this room. Oh, this room. Is there shrimp in here? No, there's nothing in here right now. All right, let me show them this room then real quick. So this one is where they store their shrimp that all of you guys can come and buy. Look at that. And they got a bunch of it. Yeah. <laughs> now they don't harvest every day, they harvest on Thursday. So if today was Thursday, this place would be a madhouse. All these bins I'm sure would be full, wouldn't they? They are, we pull them with different ice and other chill things in the water they're so hot when it comes here we have to drop it down as fast as we can to about 33 yeah That's it's our meal. cold so in here these, these will be filled with ice and water and all of them so we rinse them in three, three different bins and then we chill them again and we soak them and then they get dumped on these tables and i have people in here they sort um for size texture shape if they're broken and stuff like that so we also sell what we call class b which a lot of people come for feet oh. and they're perfectly edible they're just not up to our standard of what we sell as like our ideal shrimp and size so like what she was just saying in there on thursdays that room there'd be thousands of pounds of shrimp and they have people that sort them for different classes 
they have a certain class called a class B that's a bait shrimp that is 100% edible. It's just as good as the class A shrimps. It just doesn't look as good. It's either been slightly bruised or it's not as big. And I just met this dude, Finn. Where are you from? Uh, Melbourne, man. What are you doing up here? Uh, getting shrimp, man. Uh, we have a, a bait shop and a seafood shop up in Melbourne, downtown Melbourne, Riggs Outpost. Uh, so you sell these shrimp to consumers? Yeah, blue shrimp, man. It's, the people look, people, there is a, a following for the blue shrimp. So fish no fresh, man. And you don't get no fresher than uh, last reason of a live. So, so you sell these for bait and for human consumption. Mm -hmm. Y'all, we're about to dig into some shrimp. This yeah. has been such a cool opportunity. He lives up where we go shrimping. He's actually friends with a guy named Daniel that we shrimp with the other day. Um, we actually did two shrimping videos. We only produced one. That was the one in Mims. You guys check this place out. I'm going to put all their stuff in the information below. But right now we're going to grab our shrimp that I casted and we're going to head back to the house. And we're actually going to cook some wild shrimp that we caught with his buddy Daniel and our new friend Daniel. And these shrimp side by side and see which one we think tastes better. Look at that, folks. That was one cast net. You saw I let half of them go. Yes, you did. Keyword USA. Every bit of this process is done. The shrimp are born in the United States, raised in the United States, and sold in the United States. All right, you guys. I had to bring in a mad scientist for this. But before we get going, this is all Brarrington, my brother, by the way. But before we get going, I got to say we're not against the commercial fishing industry. We're trying to point out a way to get shrimp without bycatch. Have you ever worked as a commercial fisherman? Yes, I have. A Me long too. time. Me too. These shrimp right here, Crystal and I caught. They were caught on 2124. We actually had bycatch catching them. Now, it wasn't very much, but there was some bycatch. Did you get bycatch with these? Zero. And I got to you... catch them myself. Myself. I, I can't believe they let you throw the cast. Dude, in. when he said that, my world lit up, folks at home. Those season? people, everybody out there was so friendly. When you talk about big companies, and especially when it comes to cleansiness, like you can't just roll up in somebody's business. Aubrey runs a huge business. I can't just roll up in there because there's things going on. Things going on. I will tell you, I just previewed the video and I thought they did a great job explaining the water treatment process. It's really sounded uh, impressive. I look forward to going. But the question I have for the viewers, the, the dude talked about adding sugar to the water. Does anyone know why they added sugar? I know. We but thought does, it was Kool-Aid. It ain't Kool-Aid. Do you know why they added sugar to the water? I don't know. One thing we did is we added some words, some keywords right. on the screen. So if you have kids like I do, Crystal's doing their homeschool with them. We're going to start making them do projects. And I... <laughs> <laughs> Jake, Jake's so fired up about this. But no, with those keywords, we're going right. to give Jake and he's got to learn those. So if you have kids and you're watching right. this, make them study some of those words because they're super and important. If they're, if they're in high school, the nitrogen cycle, which is really what's going on in that treatment, is so interesting. It's one of the things in high school and undergrad at University of Florida I didn't appreciate. But as a graduate student at Texas A&M, one of my absolute favorite classes was uh, nutrient cycling. It's amazing what happens. If you understand the nitrogen cycle, carbon cycle, it's remarkable. And the dude added sugar because it's a it's an energy source. Just like we want candy bar after dive and get a quick hit of energy. That sugar is energy for the microbes and the microbes that are doing the heavy work of treating the water, it's called labile carbon. They use that and they keep eating and the microbes in there when there's no oxygen around they're stripping oxygen off nitrate and nitrite which is NO2 or NO3 they strip the oxygen off the nitrogen leaves the nitrogen to bond with itself goes back to the atmosphere 80 percent of the atmosphere is nitrogen actually 76 percent 76 his wife there's Jennifer his mm -hmm. wife she's crazy smart too folks <laughs> she's the actual chemistry teacher anyways nitrogen leaves the water as nitrogen gas goes to the atmosphere 80 76 percent of the atmosphere is nitrogen gas uh, Aubrey you just sort of ruined the video though because I told the the kids had to figure this out on their own now all they got to do is copy and paste what you said no 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 there's a lot more to it than that I learned that in like chapter two of this <laughs> oh, <year. laughs> yeah just like Jake calling me out saying I only got chapter two knowledge yeah <laughs> Crystal was doing Luke's work the other day, and he goes, I already know all those spelling words. He got the first two wrong. It's 78. I was wrong. 78%. 78. Now, one thing I want to point out that we didn't in the video. So shrimp farming around the world most of the time is done by saltwater. 
fish farming like this and shrimp farming like this, if you're adding water from the ocean and then taking that water and putting it back in the ocean is terrible. You don't want that because then bad things get and, put in the and ocean. And also the habitat destruction. They'll exactly. clear cut mangroves, they'll clear cut seagrass yeah. beds, right? They'll really wipe out habitat. And fish farming, the sea lice and all. So what makes this place special and why most of the video was about cleaning the water is they're making their own water, cleaning it and reusing it. Right. There's no water coming in to the place or leaving it. That's why I asked Aubrey, I'm like, should I leave all this in? He said, absolutely, because that's the most important part. If they were somewhere near the ocean and sucking in water, they could be bringing in disease and then that could kill all their shrimp and vice versa. If they were dumping water, they could be right. putting bad stuff in, just like an aquarium. If you go to a fish stop, a fish aquarium place and build an aquarium, get it set up and then go out into the wild and get a wild fish and put it in there, it's done. The whole aquarium will just go to crap most of the time. You ever done that? Yeah, every time. That's why my aquariums are empty. Right here it is, folks. So here are the shrimp we got from them. And here are the shrimp Crystal and I got. We're gonna leave the tails on these shrimp and take the tails off them. We're gonna cook an awesome dinner and see who likes which one the most. Notice the size difference. Well, in, in the wild shrimp's defense, Crystal and I already deheaded them. And while we were deheading these shrimp, Crystal and I learned a trick that if you take a spoon and you slowly remove his head, 90% of the time the poop devein comes out. So these are the wild ones. I'll just simply pinch that and then peel it. Super easy. Now we don't need to devein them because we already did it when we were cleaning them. Now you can tell all these shrimp are dead. They're fresh, but they're dead. They cannot sell live shrimp from that place because they are a non-native species. Right. They're a, a Pacific. Yeah, a Pacific. They're not native to around here, so they're all dead. And Crystal just said, well, I thought we caught jumbos. Their shrimp are so big. If you look at it, the shrimp's about the same size. It just took us four or $500 and about 900 cast net throws to catch those. <laughs> a lot, like I was wore out. So I'm gonna just pinch its head and see if the poop domain will come out. Nice and slow. And it just came out. But we're gonna leave the tails on these, meaning we're gonna split them right here. So one will have the tail on, one will have the tail off. We're doing this very simple. Just a little bit of sea salt, a little bit of garlic powder. Not my typical Lowry's, this is just a plain powder because Miss Jennifer Arrington is gluten free. And what else? Dairy free. Dairy free. Garbage free. Garbage free. <laughs> you don't eat Twinkies and stuff like no. that? Little Debbie's? Man, no. me and you couldn't hunt together. What? Wait. Dad, you try to eat before my she, parakeet? Before she went gluten free, she would definitely pound an oatmeal cream pie. <laughs> Those are Those the are best. As long as you eat Twinkies, don't eat the wrong one because it might end up being my parakeet. Why do you uh -oh. say that? Oh, because your parakeet's name's Twinkie. Yeah. <laughs> All right, back to, the, back to the show, folks. A little bit more on each side. Then we're going into straight coconut oil. We're doing it simple and easy, and both of them in the same pan, so we cannot cheat. Are these gonna be crispy? Yeah, they'll be nice and crispy. Oh, Jake showed up like a vulture over here. Jake started <laughs> to cook a lot. Jake can cook fried deer meat and brown gravy and rice with the best of them. He's been able to do that for a while. But can you smell it? That is a fact. I can smell it, and it smells naturally good. Wait, I wanna taste it. Not yet. You can't cheat. We all got to taste it at the same time. Thank you, dear God, for this day. Thank you for dying on the cross for our sins. Thank you for allowing us to be able to gather here. And thank you for blessing us with this rice, shrimp, with all the food you gave us and drink. Please help it to nourish our bodies and please help it. Please help us to be able to enjoy it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, folks, we've got the farm raised shrimp and we've got the wild shrimp. They're all different sizes. Everybody just eat the shrimp and tell me which one you think bet is better. There's no talking, so they gotta be good. There's no way you could tell. If you didn't leave the tails on, there's no way you'd be able to tell the difference between these shrimp. Jennifer? I don't think. I can tell the difference. You can? I think that this the tail ones are denser. Oh, really? Don't you think so? Yeah, maybe def definitely denser. Is that a good thing? Bad thing? 
Um, it's more like a texture thing. The taste is the same. The only thing different between these shrimp is these have never been frozen. The wild ones have. Oh. But like Jennifer said, that is just absolutely amazing. The farm raised shrimp, you cannot tell that that's different or Aubrey said the same thing. No way to tell. I don't think so. They're both great. I like the tail ones better. Babe? I like both of them. That's how I am. I don't, I, I think the point's been proven. That's it folks, you've seen the entire process. Leave a comment below if you want to see more videos like this. I'll go on a shrimping boat next. I don't know if they'll have me on there after this video, but hey, I'll do it if they will. They might want to prove the point that they don't cause that much damage. Any kind of video you want me to do, leave a comment below and we'll do it if it's a good, clean, healthy video. All right, you guys, huge shout out to Aubrey and his wife Jennifer for coming over for dinner to do a taste test, even though I've had worse things to go and do in life <laughs> than to eat free shrimp. You get Another, a phone call, hey, can you come over and eat all the shrimp you want tonight? I'll be there. <laughs> Another huge shout out, sustainable, natural, American. You guys check it out, homegrownshrimpusa.com. They sell the shrimp in these little bags right here. Five pounds, flash frozen. It was alive, then it was frozen. In this little cooler bag, just like this. Look, Aubrey, you got all the free shrimp you could eat in a little consultation. Consultation, consolation. <laughs> How do you say it? What's the correct word? Consolation. Consolation prize. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Thanks, Dave. You guys, we're not bashing anything. We just showed you guys a new sustainable chunk of food. I mean, that's it. That's all you can say. And it tastes good, too. Mm -hmm. it tastes good. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. But like Jake always says, get back out of shape.